Good evening, it's my pleasure to call the February 9th, 2023 Finance and Facility Committee meeting of the School District of Haverford Township to order. We will begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Green lights on now. <clears throat> and I will turn it over to Dr. Rushi to walk us through tonight's agenda. Great. Thank you, Ms. Wiedemann. Uh, we have, there are two uh, discussion items on our agenda this evening. The first being our uh, monthly update that we receive regarding the construction projects uh, from CB Development. And our second item, um, our financing updates uh, at the last meeting. Jamie Schlesinger uh, presented uh, for us looking at financing options and he said he would be back this evening and we'll, or some refinancing. So we'll take, uh, take a look at that tonight. Uh, but we'll start, uh, Ken, with the construction, various construction projects. Thank you, good evening, everyone. So we'll start off uh, with Linwood. So one of the things we did uh, for this month, we updated, probably should have been doing it all along, but we just added a line item to the spreadsheet just to show the soft costs and the total project budget because really uh, what we've been presenting was just the construction the cost change orders um, and it was not uh, not comprehensive so we just want to make note of that we've added that to each of the items so nothing's changed with Linwood's budget uh, just showing what the total budget is and um, the only other items to close out we still are with the county conservation going back and forth on some survey information that's been missing. So hopefully that's in the next month or two. And then there was some card reader work that was long, took over a year and a half to get some of the equipment that's finally complete. Uh, so that's all that we have for Linwood this evening. So then reading this table, it is, I'm sorry, the, the $34.1 million total cost, but we have the contingency balance of the 875 um, is, that savings. is unused that yep. is correct and that's where you can decide how to how to use that leftover money be it paying for the additional debt service or for something else so 33 million dollars for the whole project correct nice all right well, high school phase one same thing that budget you know has been closed out the last handful of months it was just putting the total cost of the project at the bottom of the 10 million 020 and these are numbers that um, you know we've passed along to Jamie to reconfirm and high school phase two uh, similar fashion everything's just about done the fence that we've been waiting for over seven months for finally arrived they've been installing it so that should be done very shortly here the fence around the chiller in the back of the building and then again similar to Linwood going through some final survey information that we have to get to the county conservation so we can formally close out the NPDES permit. So that will most likely be uh, again in the next two months. Then for Chatham Park, um, we have uh, things going on still there. They've wrapped up the chiller for the most part that's been installed uh, startup is going to be scheduled for early spring so that will be done same for Coopertown both chillers so that's that will be done the air conditioning will be up and running uh, which is good news for the spring and then all the the you know window air conditioners can be removed then as far as uh, anything else for Chatham and my apologies I missed uh, putting it in here I don't know how I did that but uh, there is one small change order for $2,500 uh, for Conrad for a missing countertop for this month. So I'll update that and resend that. And that's it as far as Chatham is concerned. And then, well, phase two, of course, will be uh, done this summer. And that's the additional $1.16 million there. That's the, that's the money that's build. left over, correct. So you have uh, Chatham is... 17 classrooms left to do uh, this summer. So most of the infrastructure is in. It's just getting into the classrooms and getting that done. So 
the, like the duct work and the way to connect. In, to yes, shore. inside the classroom itself. The main pipe runs are down most of the hallway, so it's really just getting into the classrooms, putting in the air conditioning unit, uh, and finishing that out. Actually, in the old, this is in the 1990 wing, most of those units hang above the ceiling, where in the, what they did this past year, the units are in the corner of the classroom. Uh, Coopertown, almost every single classroom, they're all above the ceiling, which is nice because it doesn't take up the real estate on the floor. Mm -hmm. Just chat them the way it worked out with some of the old classrooms. They had to, there wasn't enough room above the ceiling, so they sat in the corner of the room. That's why the plumbing costs are still below half built, give or take. Uh, yes, because you're, you're probably, uh, yeah, that's correct. Okay. Yeah, so you're, t you know, 70% done, <coughs> you know, which is about right because the, the chiller and some of the bigger equipment was put on in this first phase. Sure. Okay. Uh, so moving into Coopertown, so same thing. As, as I said, the chiller uh, was installed. We'll get that up and running. They actually have started uh, some phase two work, second shift. I think they're, you know, a lot of these contractors are so busy over the summer. Uh, so they've have asked to come in second shift at night. So they've started doing that in the phase two area. And they've actually gotten a lot of work done and they put everything back together. So nobody knows they're there. Um, so they really have, have made some great progress. The electrician is going to do the same thing. They actually just asked us that and Randy, he didn't say when he was going to start. They were trying to determine that, but sometime soon. Uh, so we'll coordinate that, of course, with uh, Elizabeth there. So, and then there's one, uh, there's no change orders this evening for Coopertown, but there is a recommendation for McIntosh. We needed to do a little bit of structural design to put in a new roof hatch. Uh, Coopertown does not have a roof hatch to, to get up onto the roof, only by ladders on the outside. So uh, that's for $2,000 to get them to finish that design so that can get installed this summer. And that's been coordinated, the location's been coordinated with JR, what makes the most sense in the school. Um, so one of the other items uh, for tonight, so if you notice, the total project budget for Coopertown is $7.1 million. Uh, I unfortunately made an error last month when I sent it to Jamie in December. Um, when the roof bids came in, I updated the spreadsheet, and it's been $7.1 million all along. That's what's been presented, but I messed up a formula, and I gave Jamie a number of $6.1 million. Uh, so I apologize for that. That's what he presented at the December 8th meeting, but I called him right away. Uh, two weeks ago or so now, and he'll be, it's all falls within the borrowing that uh, he'll be presenting tonight. So I think that is it for where we are for right now. And so looking at the Cooper town, just to orient to the, so the total project budget is 7.1. Is that with or without the two phases of roofing? That is with that inclusive of the roofing. Okay. Yeah, there was a, initially a $2, a $2 million hold in the budget for both phases of roofing. And also, uh, we, you said the contingency balance from Linwood. So we have close to 900000 from Linwood. And then also, am I reading this right from the high school project? We had a contingency balance from phase one that what carried over that to phase carried two. into phase two and phase two is pretty much done so does that mean that we also have that so you have 50,000 50, left 50, okay then you also currently and the way uh where Coopertown is is in very good standing it actually started out with 300,000 but it's up to 445,000 okay. dollars now um and then Chatham Park also has a balance of a 192,000 so and, you know, we do foresee some things. So Coopertown, the one item to bring up, I don't have a change order this evening, but the uh, design team did have a, a miss where the way the, the piping was fed for the hot water. So they do have to repipe the phase two wing. Order of magnitude is probably around forty forty five thousand dollars $45,000. So it would have been, it's an omission. It would have been something you would have had to pay for had it been on the drawings. It's just that they should have found it then, but they're fine, found, just found it now. Uh, the contractor actually pointed it out because he was starting to do the phase two work and realized that uh, original 1952 wing was piped differently. So we'll be coming back to you soon with that. Uh, but that is it as far as the update goes.
Thank you. Thank you. No other questions for Ken. So thank you, Ken. Um, and we'll move along um, to our financing discussion. Jamie Schlesinger from PFM. Well, thanks again for having me. Um, I guess the last time I was here, we had a, a good conversation, I know, about kind of planning for the next set of projects, looking kind of long term. And but more importantly, we started talking about kind of finishing up these projects as, as Ken described. Uh, so we have a couple minor updates based on the conversation that we had, uh, but actually most importantly, we actually have an opportunity because of the market shifting in a way that makes economic sense for us to consider that concept of refinancing the 2009 variable rate bonds and terminating the hedge swap associated with it. I alluded to that during the last finance committee meeting that economically at the time it didn't make sense. Um, kind of what's happened since then is, I'm gonna get a little technical here, but the ratios between the swap market rates and the treasury market essentially have widened enough that it makes economic sense to be, to be able to terminate for a positive value. So that's not typically normal. It's wide enough that there's a value to it for us so I am not showing you kind of full numbers about the refinancing because the concept behind this is, can we terminate the interest rate swap and refinance the debt and save a couple bucks and get us out of the administrative burden, you know, some swap risks, some letter of credit renewals that cost things. It's not gonna be a humongous amount of savings based on this structure and that's never supposed to happen. But I think it's warranted enough to consider moving forward with this, assuming the market comes within a, a range that we're hoping to get. So that's kind of the big picture here. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about kind of the amounts outstanding, what it kind of looks like. But the good news here is we're in a better position than we were a few weeks ago. Could it change? Of course it can. So we're gonna do our best to kind of move along and, and get us ready to go. So if you wanna to turn to the second page, which again, just briefly touch on this. Oh, do I, I, I get to move it this time. There you go. Okay. Uh, so this is our, our chart that we always show. This is the interest rate uh, chart. I always point everyone to the, the bottom section of that chart. Uh, this kind of gives you a historical uh, interest rate of the 10 year MMD, which is the AAA interest rate for kind of all municipal bonds in the market. Uh, we've had you know some ups and downs over the last year, but Generally speaking, uh, to start the year, it's been relatively stable. Um, you know, we've, we've issued uh, you know, several uh, financing so far. The market has been pretty strong. Um, issuers are getting you know, good rates, strong credit spreads on those bonds. And you know, the market seems to be eating, up, eating them up pretty well. So you know, we're, we're happy with it. Uh, you know, we, hopefully there's you know, no major bumps to come, but for right now, things have been relatively stable. You know, our goal here will be to go through a, a process that's a little bit different than we've done in the past. I'll, I'll touch on that uh, in a little bit on, on how we're considering financing this, and, and I'll, I'll touch on it later. But again, overall, you know, if you go out, you know, 20 years, you're, you're going to be somewhere in the 3% the range, which I think in the grand scheme of things, that's, that's a pretty good rate. It's not two, but it's, you know, in the 3% range, I'd be pretty happy with. So here's the summary of what we're going to try to accomplish. So big picture and what we've done in the past when we've asked you to consider uh, moving forward with the financing, we've done something called a parameters resolution. And the concept behind that is we want to have flexibility to go to market when we're ready because we can hopefully time the market on a good day, one, and two, uh, get what we need to get done to get moving for the transaction. You know, there's ne necessary steps that need to happen both on the administrative side as well as our, our side to get to the market. So the parameters essentially establish a certain amount of things, which include a maximum borrowing amount, the purpose, a maximum interest rate, and a maximum term. And if there's a refinancing that you wanna have a, a savings threshold, we can add that as well. All of those things we would file with the Department of Community and Economic Development that essentially establishes the transaction. And then when we're ready to go to finance the issue, we'll do it on a particular day. And as long as we meet those standards, 
we'll be ready to go. We will never hit those max amounts. So when you see this, assuming we move forward with this, you'll go, oh my God, this is way more than we're gonna need to borrow. These interest rates are way higher than Jamie's talking about. What's going on here? The answer is this is the way we have to do it because we have to follow the rules of, of the state guidelines. We're gonna fit between all those things. Obviously, we're gonna get the best transaction possible. We're gonna negotiate you know, on your behalf and they'll work out as we expect, but we have to go higher than we expect. And isn't it right, there's some trade-off in some of them too, that you'd be maybe up in one aspect, but that gets an advantage in yeah, another exa term. Yeah, exactly right. So not to get tick, you know, into real bond math, but if you use premium bonds, which means that your rates are higher on the coupon side, that usually means that your borrowing amount will be lower from a principal standpoint. But if you have discount bonds, which means they're below 100%, you'd have a higher principal amount, but lower, lower interest rates. And the parameters that we're establishing are higher interest rates and higher borrowing amount. So we're getting both extremes here. And that again, allows us flexibility to move our principal payments within the ranges, depending on what the market looks like on that day. More than likely, we'll probably have some kind of 4% coupons is my guess, kind of that range right now. So the things we're gonna ask you to consider, number one, and we'll start with the, the new money part of it. Uh, as Ken brought up earlier, there, there's some balances left over for some of the projects on, on kind of phase two of the elementary schools. In total, that's approximately $5.8 million at this point. Uh, in addition, we've discussed borrowing in a separate series to purchase uh, the next round of buses. Uh, that would be about $1.3 million. So the ordinate, the resolution will be one large borrowing amount, but what will end up happening is we're gonna have multiple kind of break, broken out series, one for the refinancing, hopefully, one for the uh, new money for the construction, and one for the buses. All of those are separated, but it'll be, we'll price it on the same day. Can I just interrupt for clarification, maybe from Dr. Rushi, um, when we talk about 1.3 million for buses, approximately how many buses will that afford us? 10 buses, that's what we had planned 10 for this current school year and 10 that would be purchased for the next year. That it's the second 10 that we're yep. speaking of now. Exactly. And so will those be also propane, propane buses adding to the fleet? Yes. And then for the 5.8 million to finish existing projects, um, what, how does that treat the contingency that Ken talked about as being left over? Is the contingency also applied to the remaining project costs, reducing the amount of Debt that we need to borrow, or is it the has contingency? Not at this time. Okay. Yeah, it has not. I mean, we might decide to to do that, but this reflects without any contingency. Yeah. Okay. Thank so, you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the max parameters would would kind of be all encompassing. Th that's a policy question, I would say, since you're you know continuing to kind of finish up some of these projects. It may be worthwhile having it kind of set aside just in case. If there is leftover money, I suspect we'll find a way to to use it. Um, worst case scenario, we could take that money and reduce principal um, in, in, at the, in the future. That's an option as well. And if the district doesn't apply um, the contingency from earlier phases of the work to this immediate upcoming work, I imagine there'd be a way to put it in a capital reserve for other um, improvements around the district, like what we do each yeah, we year. can do with the contingency. With the contingency, yeah. Yeah, because that, that's not, well, it's technically borrowed proceeds. What you can't do is, you know, use it for our operations. Ah, mm -hmm. But you can use it for, you know, capital projects as long as they, you know, fit within certain governmental uses. So don't put a Starbucks into one of the buildings is the answer. Okay. That's, that would be important. <laughs> so the, the next set of, in which I can keep talking about this, the 2009 issue is, is the, the biggest number here. So when you see the max numbers I'm talking about, it'll be $42 million right now. The biggest chunk of that is related to the balance of the 2009 issue. Again, that goes back a long time, actually started several years ago for some capital projects that were done. Uh, it, is, it is a variable rate bond issue that was actually redone in 2009 after the financial crisis. And um, in, on top of that, we have a, a hedge instrument, which is called an interest rate swap that locks in synthetically an interest rate. As I mentioned earlier, right now, the market works well enough that if we pay for that termination of that interest rate swap, which would be you pay for, the new interest rate on the new debt would be low enough that we could pay it off and the overall cost would be lower than what you're currently paying. 
as projected with you know future cost of things that you need to do with regard to the variable rate bond issue. So uh, as Martha knows, we get a, a every annually we get a invoice from Moody's Investor Service just for that issue for about $10,000. That would disappear. Um, we have a, a letter of credit we're required to have with TD Bank. We pay them 37 basis points on the size of the outstanding issue. That will disappear. We pay a marketing agent uh, to market the bonds a fee. All those things would disappear. We'd have a very simple transaction back to the, the bond issue, and, and we're hoping it would be, you know, as a positive value to you. And frankly, it would make everyone's life a little bit easier um, from an administrative side. So it's, we've been monitoring this for a long time. Um, the fact that the transaction is relatively short, it matures in 2030, that makes it more compressed and that makes the transaction more efficient. So a little bit of everything's happening right now. Uh, so that's why I'm recommending we proceed in including this with the parameters. Certainly we can decide not to do it. I think if you can save a dollar at least, I would do it, <laughs> to be honest, uh, just because it's just a little easier for everybody. Anyone have any questions on that? Uh, I mentioned earlier again about the parameters. Again, um, assuming we move forward, what would happen is there'd be an advertisement in the Delaware Times that would be put in the paper um, that would go in on Monday. We have to get it to the paper tomorrow uh, because of the timing of how things occur uh, under requirements of, of the Local Government Local Debt Act and the newspaper's timing. So first thing in the morning around 1030, we're going to throw it into the paper. It'll be in there Monday. That gives us the time necessary to advertise. We would then come back to your board meeting on the 16th. Uh, another couple people in suits would show up and we'll discuss uh, the actual legal documentation itself. I can rehash this conversation again and kind of give you an update on the market. And then from there, we've done all the legal necessary things to be done. And then from there, we would kind of proceed with the process to, to get the bond transaction completed uh, you know, as, as quickly as we can get, get going. Anyone have any questions on that page? So the, the parameters resolution would be for both the new money and the refunding swap termination. So it would be all of that. It does everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and in the end, you know, we'll have um, the ability to move forward. You know, certainly we'll talk to administration at the time and say, this, you know, let's, let's get it done and, and we'll do it. But there won't be any more formal board action necessary from a legal standpoint. The next page, which is me to turn that page, I'm only I'm not going to show you more graphs, but you've never seen this graph before. As I mentioned, those ratios that we talk about, this is a chart that we use to help figure that out. And it's essentially uh, a, a chart that shows the difference between the swap rate, which is SIFMA, and MMD, which is you know a, a bond rate. The bottom right-hand corner, that little gray area, that's the ratio spread between those two. And see how wide it is? That's a good thing. So we want that to happen. You can see there are times over the last you know, year or so that it's been very, very flat or even you know, to the downside. And that actually was where it occurred at a, you know, several points over the last year. So you can see this has been a good place in the market for this. That's why we want to kind of move pretty quickly on this. Turn to the next page. I know it's small, so don't look at the screen, but uh, this is your outstanding debt currently. Uh, again, the current balance of the, of the 2009 bonds, which is that uh, section 15 or column 15, which is kind of toward the left, it's currently 30 million 785. If you saw from our previous page, it said 29 million. You have a bond payment due on March 1st. So by the time we actually do the transaction, that principal will be gone. Uh, and again, uh, everything else is just you know the outstanding principal of the of the rest of your debt. So you know, in the grand scheme of things, you're really adding about you know give or take seven or eight million dollars because the other debt will come off. This new debt will come on. So you'll have about you know. $145 million outstanding principal once it's all said and done, give or take. And finally, well, not finally, at least the numbers. The, the colorful chart uh, for this set of, of numbers, uh, again, no major difference except from last meeting that because we added that extra million dollars, we extended it a little bit from the final maturity because we wanted to kind of make it kind of even throughout. So the annual payment on the borrowing necessary for, for the new money would be about, uh, you know, about 5.8 million, give or take. You know, not a major difference from an incremental standpoint from before by that extra, just a little bit of interest. Uh, again, final maturity on your debt will be 2038. And again, the, the buses, which is the, the column 22, or which is the other blue section, again, about $172,000 for 
annually for the buses. Outside of that, you know, we're kind of in line with, you know, the estimates we've had with, with the millage impact on all this. And this is kind of just the, the last bit of this at this point uh, to, to get us completed. Questions on this page? Okay. Uh, again, as I talked about last meeting, you know, although we're not talking about any future borrowings right now, you know, given the structuring of your current debt, given the, the length of it, given the amount outstanding, given kind of what your district is from a wealth levels and, and other things we look at, you have room if you needed to borrow future, future money to, to make this work. You know, there could be a point, you know, if we said borrow $200 million, well, maybe I will have a different conversation, but you know, there's room to grow if necessary. Uh, but this will allow us to get at least these set of projects done, uh, you know, I think at a very good you know, rate of return that we've done over the last four years or so. And it looks like our maximum kind of annual debt service commitment is $13 million through 2030. Yep. And then after that, um, the amount of debt service starts to decrease so that when we talk about future debt, and how that would fit in, um, I suspect you would be providing that kind of wrapped debt service, kind of putting future borrowing so that we start feeling more of the debt service obligations after 2030. Yeah, th and there's, to there's keep a our annual payments more flat. That's correct. There's a there's a, a little other interesting dynamic to that drop off. Uh, going the wrong direction. That's right. We'll get there. Um, there's also we left a little room in there because there's some Act One things that have gone on over the years related to some of the exceptions that were taken years and years ago. So we wanted to leave some room in case we had to make some adjustments to some debt exceptions that happened even before my time. So there's a kind of a combination planning for that as well. So we're trying to be proactive in that standpoint. Okay, so the last couple pages are just the timing. Again, this is always preliminary, uh, but I always like to show you what we think we're, we're going to do here. Uh, at this point, assuming you know we, we move forward here, you know, we would be coming back to the meeting on the 16th. Uh, we can have a you know have that or resolution in hand. Uh, Saul Ewing would be joining us. We do the proper advertising as we talked about. Um, we would be going to Moody's Investor Service for our rating. They've been, you know, we've been using it for years, and you'll hopefully fall within the same range at AA2 credit uh, worthiness. Uh, the timing of that rating call will be uh, based on when we're ready to go. So uh, the parameters would establish that kind of legal side. Uh, the rating process is really what will drive us to getting to market. Once we kind of have that process in hand, we would, you know, we'll continue to move forward. We're working on the preliminary official statement. That's the, uh, the document that investors will be able to review the credit side, the demographics of the school district. We'll prepare that on behalf of you along with your administration. And once we're all said and done, uh, we would lock in interest rates. I keep forgetting about the most important thing I want to talk about tonight. It's the, the method of which we're going to finance this. We're talking about bonds. The last several transactions, we have done these bonds with a competitive bond issue over the internet, which has worked quite well for the district. Many, many years ago, uh, the district, I say many, many, enough years ago, I've been here for long enough at this point to say many, many, uh, we've used to use a negotiated form of uh, uh, financings where we worked with one bond underwriting firm. I am recommending for this particular issue that we go back to the negotiated form of financing this financing. Why? Number one, we're introducing the concept of that termination of the swap, as well as doing a, there's a lot of background work associated with getting this ready to go. Most importantly, the swap provider happens to be RBC, which is Royal Bank of Canada. The underwriter I'm recommending using will be RBC Capital Markets, who actually served as your underwriter several years ago. I think the flow of both firms, the timing of all this, and the complexity of the transaction makes it more difficult to do this on a competitive nature. So I'd ask that we do, that, do this with them in this particular case. So we're going to have them, assume you're okay with this, 
provide us a what is called a bond purchase agreement. That's part of the approval next week to approve them as the underwriter. And then my firm, being your fiduciary, would negotiate the terms and conditions, the interest rates uh, at the time of sale. Um, I think I mentioned, might have mentioned this in the past, we have a specialized pricing group that we work with on larger transactions, even smaller ones too, uh, in Charlotte that we, we use to negotiate the terms and conditions using all the information of both Pennsylvania credits as well as national credits, we work directly with their traders, and, and I think we do a great job of negotiating terms on, on the financing. So that's the change I'm suggesting for this one because of some of these complexities. We'll get a great execution one way or the other, but I wanted to point that out that it's going to be a little bit different in the way we're going to do it because of that. I'm happy to kind of go into more details on that, but that's that's my suggestion. So it sounds like um, because of the complexity and I don't know, the amount of brain damage due diligence that firms might do, that it is helpful to have somebody know that, okay, this business is yours if you can help put it together like that they'll be able to give it the time and attention it'll be the cohesiveness of the termination of the swap and uh finding the investors at the same time is really what drives this uh it the market is always fluid the swap market's extremely fluid so we want to make sure that we're working around the same time to do both these things what we don't want to do is terminate the swap you know really early and then the market shifts and we're now we're holding the bag for money so that's where this kind of comes in and uh, it will make it much easier for us to kind of get it done better for you. And so the, the negotiated financing would be for not just the termination, but also for the new issuance. So it would be all everything. be wrapped up into one. Yes. Is there, I definitely understand the, the concern about the complexity and like, you know, the, the swap market and all of that. Um, is there an advantage to sort of tying, it sounds like the, the new financing seems fairly straightforward or there's nothing, like that's kind of our normal way. Um, so is there an advantage, I guess, of doing all of that together under one negotiated sort of arrangement versus like just doing the swap and the complex? Yeah, no, we're doing it all together. Okay. Um, that there, we definitely don't want to separate it out if okay. we don't have to, okay. um, because just given the size of the, the easy one. <laughs> um, there's no economics to kind of separate that unless we really, really, really have to. Okay. So yeah, let's tie it all together okay. and we'll get it all done. Anyone have any other questions on that? Sorry, I just want to make sure I'm understanding. No, please. The, uh, my close the PDF, of course. Um, the, hold on, where to go? There it is. Um, so the, the refunding swap termination. So basically, you, this is sort of two separate financial vehicles that are sort of working together to lock in a fixed rate and yes. very complicated sort of mechanism, right? Yes. That's the general idea. That is a, that's a um, very good statement. Okay. So just making sure I'm getting this. Um, and then sort of with these ongoing fees outside of the fees that we're paying for just the, you know, the financing rate, um, interest rates. So by doing this termination and then sort of locking in something just one fixed rate we would be getting approximately the same interest rate but just at, but this and the same length of time so this is what until 20 2030 so we'd still get that same length of time so it's just taking something very complex and just with this ongoing additional fees and just making it sort yes. of clean and easy exactly yeah. right okay. so the analysis that we run which again i didn't bring because it's going to move a little bit, but the, yeah, we're taking into account there's an underlying interest rate that's fixed, mm -hmm. which is 3.739% or something like that. And then there's the ongoing cost. We add that to it. So when you guys budget, whenever you look at my, my debt summaries, I'm actually assuming like 4.3 something percent because I'm assuming all those ongoing variable costs as part of this. We'd remove all those other things and end up with you know, somewhere in the 3% range. Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. No, I think that, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Again, you know, it's okay. for some of you that have, weren't on the board, you know, there was a point in time where the transaction was, it wasn't working very well and it got smoothed out. And after 2009, mm -hmm. we've, I think we've done a good job managing it. Mm -hmm. The idea was always to kind of get rid of this at some point, as long as we can make it work. And, okay. and it, it happens time to be the time to do so, it. So, great. okay, good, good. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and then I guess my, my last question, um, 
just looking at the this 1.3 for the buses is there an advantage to you kind of answered this before but i just want to make sure i, I get it is there an advantage to um getting that financing now and locking it in and then if we have a contingency balance left over versus just not getting this now waiting to see if we have a contingency and then maybe getting this later if we oh you, you mean this so the you're the 1.3 is for the buses, right? Mm -hmm, so that's a separate yeah, purpose. Yeah. Yeah. The extra money you have from the construction projects, mm -hmm. which happens to be around a you know, million right. dollars, yeah. um, mm -hmm. my viewpoint is get the money locked up now mm -hmm. and maybe worst case scenario, you could use it for the next round of buses next time. Okay. You know, so we're not you're playing an interest rate game. Do we think rates will be higher next year or lower next year? I, I don't know, but I'd rather you guys have the contingency in case the actual capital comes in a little higher than it ends up. And then if you have the extra, then you can decide what you want to do with it. So we could always pay down debt if necessary, but given the amount of money here, I would just kind of set it and forget it at this point and, and we'll think about it later. That's, it's kind of fits very perfectly though, the amount you have kind of left over, so. Yeah, that's why I was kind of wondering like, what's the advantage? Yeah, I think um, you have more buses to buy though. That's a, okay, that's a good yeah, idea potentially. Yeah, yeah. I'm not throwing it out there, but I, Okay. It's possible you could yeah, think no, about that. True. I'm sure. I'm sure there's something yes. <laughs> that we'll find. But just curious. That's all I've got. Um, obviously, we'll, we'll be back next week. It'll look something like this again. Okay. Um, but uh, but again, it'll be a little bit more uh, legal discussion if we need to. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jamie. Do I need to do anything Do you have else? anything else? Um, it just where we're, we've talked a little bit about transportation and the buses, we have uh, Mr. DiPaolo, our director of transportation, scheduled for our March 9th meeting, at which time he'll talk about the you know, buses that have been purchased, looking at moving, moving forward, uh, sort of give us the state of the fleet <laughs> present, presentation. Uh, and then we will also spend um, a good portion of our evening at that meeting. Um, talking, you remember last meeting, uh, Martha talked about um, the it did the introduction to the budget piece. All right, so we will look at now. We will start to look at what some of our expenditures are, revenues are, and then uh, look at what are some of the things that we will be recommending either from the buildings from the different departments. Uh, that they're looking to, you know, continue to provide quality program. Uh, what can we do? What can we do within the budget? So we'll have that first discussion at our next meeting. Just I'm curious, this is this probably a longer term thing, but I know that the district is going to prepare um, some recommendations from the facilities study. Is that do we know kind of when that we're, that that's going to kind of be? Um, I actually was working on the, the, your weekly update for you know, okay. before and had and mentioned in there uh, in my follow up conversations with Jeff Straub from Crabtree. I think it might be best for us to look at an additional finance and facilities meeting sure. because right it's just a busy time of the year well, sure, with yeah. budget and with the you know, sounds facility like next, study. Yeah, the next meeting seems like it's going to be somewhat. Yeah, so we might look at that meeting so and try. then also have an, you know, another meeting and then have things divided up, maybe just the budget and transportation and okay. and then have something just on, on that's, facilities. That's, that's yeah. perfect. Yeah. Sure. Okay. okay. Thank um, there is a anything else for next week. Mm -hmm. um, the, there is a portion on our committee meeting agenda for a time for public comment, but I'm seeing no takers, so. Unless you guys want to talk, you guys can all <laughs> go up there and chat. <laughs> all right, so thank you everyone. Um, our meeting is adjourned. Right, thank, thank you. you.